what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Jason Friedman. Uh, he started a CXFormula.com and many other businesses and sold them. And Jason, before I formally introduce you, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast. Um, Brian Kurtz, mutual friend Brian Kurtz. Always love mentioning Brian Kurtz. Amazing human being. I've had him on the podcast a few times. Actually, this is Jason's second time on the podcast. Um, so check out the episode I did with Brian Kurtz, just a master at relationships and direct response marketing and much more. Um, also, I had on Ian Garlic. Ian Garlic um, runs videocasestory.com. So he helps capture customer success stories for the, his clients, right? And Jason will talk about how do you map out success with a client? Um, and Ian creates these videos so people can use them in their marketing and they're, um, share them with their their potential customers. So check that episode out. He also talked about how his dad, you'll like this, Jason, his dad had a restaurant in Milwaukee um, and they had live dolphins in the restaurant. You know, now he lives in Orlando. That almost seems more normal, even though it's not, but in Wisconsin, definitely not normal. They were cheese eating <laughs> dolphins. Exactly. Talk about delighting a customer as you walk in, you're eating, and then there's a live dolphin show in Wisconsin. So that was interesting. Check those out. Um, and this episode is brought to you by Rise25. Uh, at Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream relationships. And how do we do that? We actually do that by helping you run your podcast. We're an easy button for a company to launch and run a podcast. And we do the strategy, the accountability, and the full execution. You know, Jason, we call ourselves kind of the magic elves that run in the background to make it look easy for the host. Uh, and the company so they can develop amazing relationships, create great content and run their business. You know, for me, uh, the number one thing in my life is relationships. And I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way over the past decade to profile the people and companies I most admire on this planet and share with the world what they're working on. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, go to rise25.com. I'm excited to introduce Jason Friedman. Uh, he's founder and CEO of CX Formula, and he helps fast-growing entrepreneurial companies gain an unfair advantage over their competition. And how does he do that? He does it through the art and science of designing their customer experience journey. Uh, his clients have ranged from Fortune 100s to solopreneurs. He's got a lot of notable past clients, including Adidas, Nike, W Hotels, Universal Studios, Disney, Burger King, Bank of America, and many, many more. Um, and in 2008, Jason sold his first company in the high eight figures, he had built that company to $150 million and 1,600 employees. Sounds stressful. It's a pretty remarkable journey. Uh, he also started and exited four other businesses uh, in various industries, medical diagnostics, automotive, spirits. Uh, he sold one of those companies to Bacardi for $200 million. And fun fact, he has a passion for crafting exceptional customer experiences and was born in entertainment because he worked as lighting designer, director, and roadie for Peter Gabriel, Rush, International Broadway Tours, like Jesus Christ Superstar, Fiddle on the Roof, and many more. And um, everyone can check out cxformula.com. Jason, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Jeremy. Excited to be here. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're psyched. We're psyched. There's a lot to cover, you know, with your experience, but I just wanted to start with um, CX Formula and, and what you do there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, as you were saying, like my background, I have got this weird eclectic mix of stuff that I've done and a weird kind of mix of clients too, from, you know, banking to theme parks to universities and like the unifying kind of through line, if you will, for this experience really, or for my, my, my experience really is theater. Like I was a theater nerd and it's one of those kind of karate kid experiences like wax on, wax off. Like you learn how to tell a story, you learn how to connect with an audience, you learn how to take that audience on a journey whenever you're doing a show, whether it's a rock concert, a, a Broadway show, a, you know, movie, whatever. We want them to kind of forget their world that they, they came in with crazy chaos and all sorts of, you know, nightmare things happening in their normal life and be present, be focused. And CX Formula is 
uh, the, the generation of business that I have that really helps entrepreneurs, small business owners almost exclusively now um, figure out how do we get that attention and earn that attention and that engagement from our customers and how do we get them the absolute best results? Because really in theater, it's about that standing ovation. It's about that, that uh, you know, kind of experience that you have that you leave feeling transformed. And we want that with our customers. And our belief is that it's more important today than ever before. And I think most people, uh, they kind of take it for granted. And so we're on a mission to help small business owners and entrepreneurs have the amazing business that they want, have the lifestyle that they want, have the freedoms that, that they want. And uh, we have a formula that'll help you get there. Talk about where people can start, right? Because I'm sure there's a lot of businesses that come to you. Um, and there's different pieces uh, of their business, a lot of moving pieces, and maybe some are in great shape, some maybe aren't in good shape. Um, when people come to you, where do you start? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the common thread is that people are trying to solve what we call the wrong problem in their business, right? If you go online and you search for, you know, how do I grow my business? How do I scale my business? How do I, um, you know, fix uh, my problem. It's always about a sales problem. It's always about the, the top of the funnel or the entry point. And there's gurus helping people do more ads, better ads, build a different funnel, build a bigger funnel, build more funnels, spend more money on advertising, marketing, content, you name it. And what happens is we put all of our budget, all of our focus, all of our attention on that front side. And I get it in the very beginning, if you don't have any clients, you have to do that. But we kind of neglect the people that said yes to us, our customers in favor of the strangers that we don't even know yet. And so when they do say yes, and they do join our programs, if we're an online business, our courses, our masterminds, our coaching, or they come in and they purchase our product if we're in the physical world, and, you know, either way, we often neglect what that experience looks like, you know, from that kind of onboarding, like of like, I got the product or I started the program. And what does that experience look like? How do I welcome them into my world without overwhelming them? We can dig into that a little bit more all the way through to how do I make it easy? How do I remove all the friction that's currently going on in their experience with us, all the roadblocks, all the obstacles that are in their, their way that are getting them to slow down or in, in a lot of cases, stop. And um, it's, it's a big problem. And what we found through years and years of working with like companies of all shapes and sizes is that when we create a better journey, when we create what we call a kinetic pathway that seamlessly and flawlessly moves your customers through that journey and gets them those results, your business wins big time. Because then every dollar that you put into the front end whether it be outbound sales calls, marketing, advertising, you name it, every one of them compounds. And so we really help people focus on the inside, the backside, if you will, of the sale and really make that amazing. So that like you mentioned, one of your, one of your um, uh, other you know, clients or, or uh, people that you admire, they do video testimonials of success stories what if you had all of the clients or the majority of those clients coming in that were success stories, that wanted to tell them, that asked you, how can I help you? How can I help you do more? How can I connect you with other people? Because they really were receiving that amazing value. And especially now in today's world, like I've been saying this for 25 years, Jeremy, like it's more important today than it ever has been to focus on that experience because it is your fingerprint. It's the unique thing about your business. It's the thing that will make people come back to you. You can't differentiate yourself just by products or services. You just can't do it. And with the you know, proliferation of AI in the world, like competition is popping up from people that have less experience than you, kind of crafting content automatically or automatically, if you will, on the internet and putting that out there. So what's gonna make your business special? What's going to make your business stand out and, and build that loyalty with your customers? It is going to be that experience you create. It is going to be how your customers feel after they've interacted with your brand, your business, your organization. Talk about, um, you mentioned removing friction, which is yeah. just a key component for any business. What sticks out to you as uh, an example 
um, when you went into a business and there were friction points? Because sometimes we're blind to our own friction points, right? Wow. Um, what would be a good example of some removing friction moments? I mean, man, like every one of our businesses has friction points, right? And the key is to remove or reduce as many as possible. It's not, it's not possible to remove every friction point. And sometimes you want to actually add a friction point to slow things down. So it could be used strategically either way. That said, let's just talk about what a friction point is. A friction point is a moment that stops or slows someone from taking to the, going to the next step, from taking action, moving forward. Okay. And so um, it could be and is often one of the very first moments that someone comes into your world. So let's say hypothetically that I just purchased an online course, right? I bought someone's training online. It's amazing. It's going to help me. Maybe it's going to help me learn how to um, produce my own podcast, right? I really want to do a podcast. I decided that I, I want to kind of do it on my own, but I want some training. So I go and I buy this program. And then I get that kind of first email after I bought it says like, Congratulations, you're part of the team now. We're, we're excited to have you in our community. Um, here's what you need to do. And it goes through and gives you 400 steps that you need to do. You gotta log in here, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, then you gotta go purchase this thing and you gotta do that. And it's overwhelming, like I just bought this. You wanna figure out how you give me the least amount of information that helps me take that next step because you're overwhelming me. And if I really want more, I'm going to go through those steps and you'll be able to give it to me in bite-sized chunks that make sense. Like that, like give me the ability to move forward at my own speed. Not that you're giving me so much that I feel instantly overwhelmed. Remember, here's the thing that I think a lot of business owners forget. When someone initially says yes, they, they chose to move forward, right? It was an intention to do it. It was not truly a commitment. Commitment comes after. And so as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, as a coach, author, speaker, whoever you are, you have to get that commitment. And you, you almost have to resell people on why they're doing it as they go through that journey, as they go through that process. And so what we try and do is help build confidence as people move through that journey, that they have taken the right step, that they are on the path to achieving their goal. And we do that by a series of wins that we allow them or, or, you know, kind of compel them to have, and we make accessible for them to have throughout the entire journey. So for example, one of the big concepts that we teach and we go deep into in our training programs is this idea of time to first value, right? And time to first value is what is the shortest amount of time that you can get somebody a win when they first enter your program, right? The shorter that time to that first value, the more likely that person is to stick with it and to have a positive uh, feeling and emotion about what they just did. And the win is not like, oh, I got my first podcast launched in the scenario that we're using before. It's that I took a really good step. And that is, you know, it's one of those things where we need to set the expectations for them as to what that would be as a major win so that they are, they're tuned into it. Right? They have to get a, have an awareness of what that path looks like. And amazing, you got to step one so quick. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Celebrate that. Now, we're going to go on to our next step, right? And then you can move them through that. And so if there's too many things that are in the way, like it's cumbersome, like emails or, or housekeeping and logistics becomes the main point of that communication, they're not going to probably take that first step. There's there's so many people like in the online course world that make a purchase and never, ever even log in. Now, maybe as the business owner, you're like, okay, you know what? That's typical. And I'm happy to just take their money. They can log in if they want. I'm providing the service. It's there. But what would happen if you actually got them to take action and they got those results that you originally created your business in order to serve those people? Like you, you deeply wanted to help those people. And now they're not. So how can we help them get those, those amazing results that they wanted and that you wanted for them? It's by really tuning in. And the biggest mistake people make is that they think about it from their own vantage point, from the vantage point of the business. And so what we help people do is kind of flip the point of view. We got to rotate and we got to look at it through the customer's mind and through the customer's eyes and step into their shoes, put on their glasses and see what they're seeing. 
because it's very different perspective looking at it from another angle. What are some of the pieces, you know, in the, we talk about the customer journey and that you've thought through because you've crafted CX formula, yeah. which is what have you built into CX formula? Um, you know, because you eat your own dog food with this that um, help them with the, with the customer journey of CX formula. Uh, I mean, we, we try and give people that amazing experience. Now, um, one thing I'll point out, and this is true for all of us, is that, you know, Murphy's law exists, right? It's a real law. Like something, if something can go wrong, it will go wrong at some point. So in my world, creating a great experience is not that everything goes right. It's how you handle it when things don't go right, right? So we do our best to make it smooth and frictionless and amazing. And if something is not, we step up to the plate and try and not only, you know, triage the situation that just happened, if it happens and it goes wrong, but also improve the process so that in the future that doesn't happen again. So we learn from those mistakes, right? So like, for example, like when people um, first join, we, we do, so we have a, a program called the Kinetic Customer Formula. And I could talk more about what that actually means in a second, but when people took that, so last year we launched that new program. It's really like what we're most proud of, the work that we've done over the last 30 years of our lives, Jeremy. Like it's really a kind of like a masterpiece of, of what we've built and it's improving, right? It's, it's, it's always getting better. But we did this through three-day um, immersive workshops where people would fly in and we'd take them through this journey. And when I tell you that every single moment from when they first said yes, the emails they got, the conversations we had, the calls they had, to their arrival experience and, and all the way through the workshop, every moment was crafted and choreographed. Like there was nothing that happened by accident um, uh, for the whole thing. Now, there were some surprise and delight moments that we thought of as we were going. And so those happened on purpose and they were kind of planned in as we were feeling the vibe of the group that was there and we were tailoring the experience to that audience, we would add some, some cool things and some, some features, right? So for example, we actually had a group of entrepreneurs from Portugal come all the way over to the US to take this program. So no, no, I mean, it was expensive to just fly here and the logistics of the travel, right? Which was on them, we took care of everything else. But part of our program in the workshop series in the, these intensives is that we provide meals around, you know, all the meals. We provide, you know, a welcome reception. We do all, all the things to make it really cool. And even when they come into our space, it's really awesome. Like it's set up um, in a way. I don't want to spoil a surprise if anybody ever decides to take me up on it. But it's a cool vibe space and it's got unexpected things that happen or even just the layout and the the furniture and the surroundings are, are not what people expect when they come to a workshop. So there's, there's a little bit of a wow factor surprise just when people come in. But I'm um, like, these guys, they had never been to a Japanese hibachi restaurant, like where they cook on the tables. Like to most of us in America, like it, we've been there, right? We've seen it, whatever. There happens to be a really amazing one here. And so we, we accidentally found that out and we switched our reservations, we changed our contract and we brought them to that place because it was going to be something that none of them had ever experienced. So it was going to be a new wow kind of experience for them. Is it earth shattering? No, but it was a earth shattering to them. And to, you know, we had, uh, we brought a couple stretch limos out to actually take them in these stretch limos because they had never been in a stretch limo in the U.S. All of, most of them had not been to the U.S. before. I think two of them had and maybe had been a limo. But they don't have gigantic vehicles like that in Portugal. They're, they're, they just don't have it. So it was just a way to like, as we are learning who they were and what their experiences had been in the past, we made some pivots to actually custom tailor and kind of customize the experience to that audience. And so, you know, they were blown away. So in our experience, in our journey, um, which we call a kinetic pathway, like you have a journey now, we transform it into a kinetic pathway by removing friction, by inducing and adding what we call momentum boosters or momentum inducers. And we use those to help propel people through the difficult parts or even to get an extra spurt of wow, if you will, extra boost of wow juice uh, into the mix. But it's like little things like that. They were all taking videos of it. They were putting it on social media. They, they couldn't believe how cool it was. And again, it, it, it just took a little bit of thought. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't crazy expensive. Uh, more so than what we were planning pre previously. And it was just part of the journey and they were thrilled. So, you know, what, what are the moments that you have? Like getting to a restaurant for a bunch of people that are out of town, it could have been like a big bus, it could have been Ubers, it could have been anything, 
we chose to do stretch limos and we had certain music playing in the limos for them that was kind of cool and set in the mood and whatever. When they walked in the restaurant, they were all greeted and it was just, it was a very lovely evening. Um, so well, like America's amazing. <laughs> stretch oh, limos yeah. and bocce. Of course, right? And they were they left thinking like, oh my gosh, like we need to open up one of these in our country. Like, you know, I probably created some entrepreneurial like seizures for them that night. <laughs> what else should people know about the kinetic customer formula? Yeah, I and mean, thanks for asking. Like, I think, Jeremy, like here's the thing, right? We have customers that have potential. If you go back to, to science class, right? There's there's two types of energy. There's potential energy, which is energy that could do something. That has the ability to do work, but it's not in motion. And then you have kinetic energy. That's energy in motion, right? And so I use an analogy a lot of a rocket ship. You have this ship sitting on the launch pad. It's got all the fuel. It's got everything, but there's no rocket ignition yet. That has a massive amount of potential. It could go to the moon, right? But it's not. It's just sitting there. It's, it has inertia. It has gravity holding it down. When they light those rocket boosters and they ignite the flames and they start to take off, all of a sudden, that all that potential is transformed and converted into kinetic energy, energy in motion. And in the very beginning, it takes a lot more energy to get that rocket ship off the pad because it has, again, the, the forces of inertia and it has gravity holding it down like glue. As it gets further and further up, those rocket boosters, they all kind of fall off and now you have this rocket that can just almost easily move around. It doesn't need all that same momentum boosting it. Now it's in, it's in a kinetic state and it has so much more ability to be flexible and move through it. Your customers are the same way. They come in and they have potential, but they're not taking action. They're not in momentum. And it's our job to be, defeat that inertia, to get them in action, to get them getting results and to induce and boost them with momentum and that rocket fuel to the point where now we don't need as much energy. We just have to keep directing them and guiding them when they're already in that flow. That is a kinetic customer. That and the pathway, when we really take what is your kind of historical journey, whether you've designed your journey or not, your customers have one, right? Newsflash, right? So better to do it by design than by default, right? And when we do it with intention, when we design it, we choreograph it, we put all the things that we teach in that program into it, then it's a kinetic pathway. And it will almost fluidly move and effortlessly move your clients through that with a little bit of that hard work up front in that onboarding phase to overcome the inertia and the gravitational force that's stopping them from taking action in the first place. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're bringing me back in my, <clears throat> my science and physics days. I wish you were my yeah, teacher. Uh, Maybe I would have uh, actually... Uh, no. Super done fine, better in physics if you if you taught it to me like that. I mean, like it's uh, it's interesting. Physics physics was I, I had a, I had a lot of fun in physics. Drew, my partner, and I both we we enjoyed physics. But the point is, like we we just there's laws, right? These are like like universal laws of how the world works, and we don't take them into consideration when it comes to our customers, and it's it's a shame, right? And and there's also a lot of psychology that comes in this too, right? So. In our program, the science part of the lesson's pretty short, right? We don't, I don't want you to feel like you got, you just got a bunch of it, right? Like we're not going to be jargony, but there are some kind of base fundamentals that I think everyone has to understand in order to get us to that next level, right? So we talk a little bit about the, the, the gravitational kind of challenges, right? And what is friction? What is momentum? And how does that play in? And then we also talk a lot about psychology, right? There's these cognitive biases, which are things that are, are like tricks that our mind plays on us in order to use less energy, right? So our brain likes to find shortcuts so it can spend its, you know, its uh, calories doing other things. So we have habits, which hopefully make things like more second nature. So we don't have to think about them all the time. And we also have these cognitive biases. They're preconceived notions based on past experience or things that are happening that like, allow our brain to not spend so much energy. And it can be really detrimental to our, as, in, as an individual, our success. Um, it can be the things that kind of stop us from taking action or make us misunderstand something that might be good for us because we had a bad experience in the past and we're kind of hanging on to that. So we really go into some of the psychology behind it too so that, you know, as a business owner, when you start to understand these fundamentals, you start to be able to really step into the customer's mind and understand them on a deeper level. Right. Um, you know, there's 
<laughs> I, we, we put out a, uh, a document years ago, uh, a few years ago. It's still relevant. And it's on our website. It's called the seven customer experience killers that are destroying your bottom line, right? And so, you know, one of the killers is what we call an expectation mismatch, right? It's the expectation mismatch trap. Like if you're not setting the expectations that your customers are going to have and setting them at the right time, then they're going to have an expectation that will not be matched up. And more often than not, their expectation is higher. And so they'll be disappointed. And so now you're battling disappointment instead of battling satisfaction or even joy, which is obviously the holy grail. So that's one of them. You know, another one um, is really not knowing how deep to go with your customers, right? And so when I talk about the expectation part, like if they have expectations because you really didn't understand them, that's one level. But if they have all these cognitive biases, like if they bought two online courses before to use that same example, and now each of those courses, one of them they never logged into because they just couldn't get past the, the initial onboarding. The other one they, they logged into, but they thought it was such basic information that it was like a waste of their money. And they even asked for a refund. And so they're like, all online courses suck. I don't know why I just bought this. I, I got excited in the moment, but I'm not even going to waste my time. That's a cognitive bias. Your course might be the most amazing thing ever, where like literally the person that just didn't log in would be thinking, if they did, wow, it's like he made this course for me or she made this course for me, but they didn't get there because they have this preconceived notion that's stuck. And so when you can go deeper on really understanding your customers, and we use some theater tricks to help you do that in ways like, you know, Matthew McConaughey, Robert De Niro, like actors used to get into character. We give you some of those tips, tricks, tools so that we can really go deeper into understanding our customers than most people do. Everyone talks about avatar or persona. Everyone has a way to do it. And they all get you a lot of the basic, I'll call it geographical and demographical information. But if you had to step into the character and play them, portray them on stage or in a movie, and really kind of be able to articulate the words they're saying, I've got you. I can show you how to do that very easily. And it's, again, it's the way that actors have been doing it forever. So we bring some of that, you know, crazy background that I have uh, and my partner Drew has into the course. And we use theater as a kind of a model and a metaphor to help you have some hacks and tricks and tips that'll like really help you get where you need to go. Jason, what's uh, an example of a theater trick? Well, uh, like, so one example is like, how do you get into character, right? So, um, I mean, this is, this is going to be another one of those kind of like science, it seems like a science lesson, right? Um, but essentially, there's, there's, uh, a, there was a, a Russian theater director by the name of Konstantin Stanislavsky in the late uh, 1800s, early 1900s, who was kind of an actor and a director and was just kind of frustrated that whenever somebody would get on stage, they weren't believable. Like when they were acting on stage, you were just like, okay, this is, this is garbage. This isn't good. And so he built a way to get into character. Um, and it's by going through, you know, uh, different kind of role play exercises and really understanding that person. Um, I won't get into all the boring details right now, but it's pretty cool. And so then that got kind of expanded out later um, with what they call the method actor, uh, method acting. And so that was kind of like Stanislavski on steroids. And so that's like how like Matthew McConaughey was trained and, and De Niro and some of those guys, right? So um, what it really is, 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 is giving you an actual way to step into the shoes of the customer and believably be able to portray them. Instead of you having to portray them, we have you believably be able to understand what's going on in their head. Because that's how you portray them. You really get the... You know, one of my friends calls it like the itty bitty shitty committee inside the head, the things that are talking them down, or it's what's like the inner conflict, the inner struggle that they have that's not having them take action. They bought 40 other products before, 40 other courses, or they've tried on their own for five years and they've never gotten that. Why? Because if you can understand some of that, or you can understand what questions to ask to help them unlock that, all of a sudden there's going to be massive improvement when they go through your program, right? Having them feel understood is so important. And you can't do that when you don't really understand them. And what we find is like, we have this kind of like contrast between interesting and interested. And so we coach people, stop trying to be so interesting. Like you don't have to be this like guru, whatever. Be interested. If you know who they are and you understand them deeply, 
showing that you understand them and that you can support them and help them is far more um, impactful in terms of relationship building and trust building than you saying, I have all this experience, I'm amazing, I know what I'm doing. Um, you have to build authority for sure, but you don't have to get braggadocious. And by understanding them and being able to articulate what's going on for them in words that they would probably use themselves but couldn't, couldn't find those words, they're gonna, you're gonna have a customer for life, right? Lifetime value just went through the roof. And so this is one of those ways, like when we talk about avatar, it's on such a different level than other people are talking about it because I want you to really get them on a profound, profound level. Jason, what's the format? I know you've done immersive experiences. Yeah. Um, is there a digital only? How, what is the formats people engage with the CX? Yeah, formula? so we have we have three ways we do it. Um, so the uh, last year, uh, and I don't know when you're listening to this. Hopefully, it's it's soon. But if you're listening to this in 2028, I'm talking about in 2023. So in 2023, we uh, we built uh, this new program out. We built the workshop series. Um, we're just launching, or we just launched actually the the course version. And so that you can purchase the course, you can go through the course, it's all pre-recorded videos, but there's also a coaching component so you can come in, you can ask questions, you can get support along the journey. And it's, uh, we, we break that kind of fourth wall of theater, right? We send you some stuff. So you get some physical stuff in the mail that'll help you along the journey. So it's, it's a little bit more interactive than what you might be used to with an online course traditionally. And then the third way we do it, Jeremy, is we sometimes, and this is very limited, we'll come out to you, right? Or we'll do a very private workshop. In our immersive workshops, we have usually uh, 10 companies that are in one workshop. Um, and it's awesome. It's a lot of fun and it's really cool. Um, but we also will do either a private one here or we'll come to you and do it with your entire team. Um, so uh, lots of different options. Like I said, the one that we come out to you it's significantly more expensive and it requires, uh, it requires like, you know, kind of closing down your business for a few days. It's, it's more intensive, right? So, um, and we only have a few spots. So uh, I, I really recommend one or the other um, because it's, it's been hugely transformational for people. Um, I know for a fact, uh, the last bunch of people that, we've, that we just did this with, I think it was um, a couple months back, um, the, 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 it's the emails that we get thanking us and sharing the gratitude that they have for how it's transformed. It's not just to fix your customer experience. It fixes and heals your employee experience. It gets your, your employees more engaged, working more as a team. Um, and they have more understanding of everyone's roles and responsibilities. They have a deeper connection to their why and your why. So they, we, we, we give you some, some um, training on this also. And so instead of like having a job description for your employees, we want them to have a position mission. So what is their mission statement for their role? And how does that connect to the mission statement of the business? A lot of times we have backstage employees that aren't customer facing, and they don't really get all the interactions and the intricacies of the business and how it works with the customers. They're just kind of doing back office. Maybe it's accounting or, or warehouse, or it depends on what your business is, right? But when we get into this and we start doing this work together, they have a whole different sense and excitement about the business. So it builds the employee journey and the employee pathways. It builds the customer pathways. And ultimately, um, I think it gives the entrepreneurs a whole different level of confidence about what they're doing and a reconnection to their initial why. Um, so often, I know this is true for me, and you know, I'm curious if it's true for you as well, but you know, we get into it and we start building a bigger business. You know, we had an entrepreneurial seizure one day, we decided to build a business. And we're doing it. We had this awesome reason why in the beginning, we were so excited about it. And then it gets harder and more difficult. And you get some client complaints, you get some employee junk that goes on. And, and all of a sudden, it's like, why am I doing this? When you go through this process, it fixes a lot of that because a lot of the reason why those things happen is because we're not focused on the journey that the employees have and the customers have. Like if they're all having a great experience and they're going through it, they're getting the results and they're having the rewards and all those other things that they want, why would it not be amazing, right? Like all that other stuff kind of melts away. And as the entrepreneur, small business owner, I'm talking to you guys right now who are listening, you end up feeling so much lighter and you have more time to work on your unique ability, to work on things that are in your zone of genius. 
and the pride level of what your people are doing and what your business is doing and the success your customers are having really becomes uh, front and center. So yeah, I just think it's uh, it's a powerful, powerful process. And it has been what we've been doing for the last 25 years. We call it something different today than we did then. And we've added and refined it a little bit. Um, and to your point, we tried to change the language a little bit so that even more people could access it, right? Because it was a little heady before, honestly, candidly. It was a friction point that we had in our, our previous version. And we took that to heart. And so, uh, yeah, um, anybody that's interested would love to hear from you uh, and see if we can help you for sure. Um, like you said, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's a joy to be able to work with the people, like you said, that you admire, that you want to help, you want to support. Um, and the same is true for us. Jason, I have one last question, and I'd love to hear some of your favorite resources. It could be books or mentors. Um, it could be distant mentors, actually mentors. But before we talk about that, I just want to point people to cxformula.com. Um, and I know that you put something together for people as a special gift. So if you want to point people there and, and talk about that for a second. Yeah, totally. So um, this is going to be one of those like kind of like surprise and delight moments. Okay. So we have a strategy that I think is like one of the best tools in our toolbox, right? One of the, one of the most potent arrows in our quiver um, and any other crazy way you could say it, you could ask AI a different way to say it, but um, it's one of the tactics that's also somewhat strategic that we have. And it is not something that you'll find on our website. It's not a downloadable PDF that you can get unless you get it through like an interview that I do. Um, and it's special. And I think if you download this PDF uh, and give it a read, it won't take that long. It's not going to take you hours to go through. I think it'll start changing your thinking and it'll give you something that's immediately actionable that you can start to think about and do in very short order. So uh, if you want to grab that, I really encourage you to. It's at gift.cxformula.com forward slash inspired. That's gift.cxformula.com forward slash inspired. I'm sure you'll put the link in the show notes. Um, but um, take me up on it. There's no cost to you. Uh, we're not going to, you know, twist your arm to buy something from us later. We'd love for you to be part of our, our community as well as part of Jeremy's. Um, you know, Jeremy, actually, you know, you and I met, you mentioned Brian Kurtz before, legend and amazing human. Um, but I think we met when I was speaking about kind of this kind of stuff many years ago, right? I'm not saying things that are dramatically different. I've got some new language for it, but it's, it's so important. And the businesses that I've been working with since, since that time um, as CX Formula have had massive growth. Several of them have sold their business for huge valuations. Um, many of them are just still growing and growing, have had better retention of their employees. So um, this strategy that I'm that I'm sharing in this, this PDF, uh, it is one of the strategies we've used in our own businesses. We continue to use it in our own business. If you become one of our clients, you'll see it in action. Um, and, uh, and I hope you take me up on it and use it. So, yeah. When Jason puts something out, I definitely listen to it and consume it. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll link it up. It's gift.cxformula.com slash inspired um, and check it out in you know, it will, I always just like to follow what Jason does because he eats his own dog food. And I just like to learn from him uh, with the, um, from the experience itself. So uh, for that alone, you should go there and experience it yourself. Um, the last yeah. question, Jason, is mentors um, who have influenced you. Uh, it could be books, it could be actual mentors, colleagues, who are some of your uh, influences? Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of them. So uh, <laughs> Brian Kurtz is on the list. Um, of course, we've, you know, beat that dead horse a bunch of times. But uh, Brian's amazing. Uh, he's been a good friend and, and mentor of mine. And uh, in many ways, how he how he shows up in the world. I uh, love that guy. Um, Jeff Walker is another mentor of mine uh, when it comes to online business. He's one of the OGs of online marketing and internet marketing. And I'm in his highest level mastermind group and just been uh, a huge fan of his and friend of his for many, many years. Um, you know, no longer with us, but Napoleon Hill is a major mentor of mine. Um, and, you know, one of my favorite books by Napoleon Hill is Outwitting the Devil. 
Uh, most people know about Think and Grow Rich, but if you haven't read Outwitting the Devil, uh, give it a read. It's not long, um, or grab the the ebook, you know, the Audible book rather. The uh, audio book uh, is pretty awesome as well. Um, huge, huge uh, props uh, for that book. Just really changed a lot of my thinking. Um, I love um, Dan Heath and Chip Heath's book, The Power of Moments. Uh, super powerful. I also love Made to Stick. So those are two of my. That's favorite. one of my favorite books too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, super, super amazing books. Um, and then also uh, another book that I love is Dan Ariely's book, Predictably Irrational. Um, for those of you that are struggling with kind of pricing wars and packaging and positioning, uh, there's like literally, I don't think there's a better book that I've ever read or found. Um, it just really gets you to think about the contrast between things and how you contrast things. Um, so uh, super fun. And then maybe last book recommendation and, and kind of mentor is another good friend of mine, Ben Hardy. Um, so Ben had done a project with Dan Sullivan, actually Dan Sullivan's on my list of mentors and coaches. He was a coach of mine for, oh gosh, like 14 years, um, really helped me and changed a lot of my life from the strategic coach. But, uh, Ben Hardy collaborated with, uh, Dan on this kind of trilogy book series. Um, and in that trilogy, one of them that I think is really helpful for entrepreneurs is 10 X is easier than two X. Um, that's the book. And, you know, this is one of those topics that I learned from Dan Sullivan. This one I probably learned back in like 2004, 2005. And Jeremy, it is the path that we use to more than 10x our first business, the one that you mentioned, that had all those revenues and people and sales and, and you know, what have you. And um, they've made it even easier to think about than when I had done it. Um, and it's something that I teach to people today, too, as part of our program. It's the thinking aspect of that you know, 10 X. And so uh, I won't spoil that book for you, but it's another one of those that I would definitely go and snag and, and see if you can, uh, utilize it pretty easily in your business. It's pretty powerful. I love it. Jason, thank you. And I just finished the gap in the gain by Ben yeah, Hardy and Dan Solve, which is also a really good one. Books. So like you said, all their books, just check them out. Um, but Jason, I want to be the first one to thank you. I always I'm learning from you. Uh, even when I first uh, heard you speak at Brian's Mastermind, everyone should check out cxformula.com and also the link to the special gift uh, that Jason mentioned. And we'll see everyone next time. Jason, thank you so much. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.